So this entire animation was created by AI. And you can see I'm toggling the sign up screen and it has this beautiful animation. The screen itself, as I've shown you, was generated through AI using the Figma plugin that I built. And then we have this error validation, email validation, and password validation. This is all through AI. And I'm using what we call Alex sidebar. So I'm gonna cover how to use that, which is basically cursor, but instead of having a separate app like cursor, you can do that next to Xcode. So it looks a little bit like this and you would prompt here. And when you prompt, it's gonna apply your code here. And so we're gonna learn how to work with this workflow. So the app, you can get it at Alex sidebar that app and for now during the beta it's free and as I mentioned before it's essentially a little sidebar that sits on top of Xcode and you can sort of use that next to Xcode the same way you would do in cursor and you're gonna have to download this and it has a bunch of features that are really useful including the auto completion. So the one that we have with Xcode is not very good. Um, so when you press tab, you know, it doesn't give like the most amazing result and it's not using Claude. And here you can do that with Alex sidebar, but also you have a bunch of features such as you can select uh, some code and then you can apply uh, code generation on that specific code. You can include an image. Pretty much the same thing. It can also search your code base. You can have inline completion, uh, fast apply, and all that stuff. So really, really powerful stuff. But most importantly, it applies directly to Xcode, which means that it's easier to see the preview of what's going on in your code anytime that you make a change. So once you have downloaded the app, you're going to open the file, which looks a little bit like this. And you, you're gonna slide this to your applications. And then you're gonna open it. And you might have to go through some permission stuff. But once that's done, and you have it open, you're going to see a little sidebar that's going to be placed on the right of your Xcode project. So you also have a bunch of you know, um, settings. So for example, the window management, uh, the auto positioning, if you wanna disable or enable that, it's up to you. And also right now it's a free beta. So I believe you don't need to set up your API keys, but if you do wanna use the custom mo uh, models, you can always go to model settings and set the ones that you want. And they even support custom models right here. So for now, I think you don't need to do anything at all. It works pretty much the same way as um, ChatGPT. So basically, it's going to read the app, which is Xcode. So whatever file that you have open, it's going to set the context in Alex sidebar. So if I open primary button, it's going to set the context here. And so I can prompt directly from this and I can also just like Xcode I mean cursor I can set the code base I can also search for a different file file such as animated gradient for example so it's pretty cool it works very similarly to to cursor and of course you know when I say cursor I think it's important to understand that there are many many alternatives uh, at least for now, we have Alex Sidebar specifically for iOS development, but we also have Windsurf and so on. And they almost work the same ways. They have some small differences. And, you know, if you look at Windsurf, for example, it's using also the VS Code as a base. So, again, very easy to translate your skills into all of those applications. Now, this is what I have. And what's going on here is that Yes, I, I, I did apply and that's going to happen often when you work with AI. So if you ever wanna go back and discard the changes, which is what I'm gonna do because we're gonna start from scratch, you can go to the second tab and right click and discard the changes. So I'm gonna do that. 
so we can have exactly the same code. And keep in mind that we're going to start from the sign of view. And I'm going to press on command 0 to disable uh, the left sidebar. And so we have the sign of view that we generated from Figma using the plugin. And again, you can experiment with any UI that you want. But in this case, this is what we have. This is a very typical sign of view and sign in view. And uh, right now, it doesn't have any error. It doesn't have validation. These are just empty buttons. So what we're going to do here is to set up a prompt. All right, so first prompt, super simple. Definitely recommend to not think too hard if you are frozen by what to say and what not. Just tell AI what you want and specifically what kind of UI that you want. Because if you're familiar with the app, you kind of know what to say or how to call things, right? Like this is a button, this is an error message. So the first one, we're going to say add error messages and email validation. So this is very clear and very concise. We want error messages and we want email validation. So we're going to press enter again with the sign of view as a context, which is super, super important. And then it's going to generate the code. Now, let's focus on the three buttons here. So we have copy code, obviously. We have uh, fast apply, and then we have apply. Fast apply is in beta, so I have tried it. It's not as good as apply code, but you're gonna want to use apply code just to be more accurate. And once you, this is done, you can essentially just click on the play button, right? And it's going to open this little window and it's going to start applying the changes uh, created by AI. And this, in my experience, has been pretty, pretty consistent. Uh, so, you know, whatever is in green, again, is what is new and whatever is in red is replaced or deleted. So I'm going to accept and boom, we have the changes. So we have the blue stuff, uh, which is the, the modification. And also, uh, one thing that you can also check is what are the messages, like the warnings, which is in yellow, and then we also have the red. So as you scroll, you can click on the red, and you're going to see that we have some sort of an error. And from my testing, it seems that this error is pretty consistent. So um, notice that we have a bunch of uh things that's kind of that's happening so this is by xcode this is the error message this is by L alex code it's going to say fix so this is going to jump to the prompt and try to fix here but you also have this little hover here which is the same as the auto completion in xcode and you can press tab to apply it and it's actually pretty good for easy problems like this one and so the code is applied and now I can just see if it's working. And yes, it does. And it even included a feature that I even didn't ask for, which is toggle visibility of the password. I could have mentioned that toggle visibility of the password, but it applied that because it has context of the code and the UI that already exists. What is this button for, right? And so that's what it does. So this is really cool. And I believe it also does password strength. I'm not sure. In some of my testing, it did add that. But, it, you know, maybe not here. And here, again, we do have the ability to fix that. And I believe that this is for the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the auto-completion, right? But it's not perfect. So we can try the different way, the different route, which is to fix. So I'm going to click here. And I believe that if I scroll down, it goes here and it adds the error message. And I can add fix this. I mean, I, I kind of understand what it is. It's just deprecated. That happens often in Xcode, which is you're using a technique that worked before in a past version of Xcode, but in a new version of Xcode, and in the future, it might not work. So uh, in this case, 
it's just mentioning that you don't need um, to have like one uh, variable, like prop incoming. You can have either zero or two. But let me see if, you know, if, if Alex code, yeah, Alex sidebar is able uh, to fix this. So I'm gonna click on play. And, you know, AI might not be most familiar with the latest version of Xcode or the latest version of Swift UI. Um, and it's gonna try, but if not, this is something that easy, easily Googleable, and you can uh, fix that quite easily as well. So in this case, it added here and here. I can try to accept it. Let's see how it goes. And I believe, so here, always pay attention to this part of Xcode because it's not instant. Um, you know, on the web, I kind of used to have everything instant, but keep in mind that uh, an application like Xcode and um, a build on, you know, iOS needs to build the app uh, from the ground up every single time. So in this case, it was not able to fix the problem, but it's a warning, so you can kind of ignore it, especially as a beginner, and you can always go back uh, using Command Z. And in this case, all you need to do is just to delete this. Um, the prop is not necessarily ne necessary and we don't even use it. So this is what we have so far. We have no error and we have the messages and the validations. And I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's do some animations. Um, I'm gonna give you a really cool prompt that I use and again, very, very important to be clear. You don't even need to know code because at the end of the day, you know, you need to know how to describe what you want. And you need to use the technical terms so that AI understands what you're saying. Um, and it's not abstract, it's not vague. And so we're gonna start a new chat. I like to do that when I'm doing something new, when I finish a task and it's like a completely separate task. Now I'm going to get a new one. So add a sequence animation, right? Sequence animation is very clear. It's an animation that follows uh, one after another. Then I'm describing each of these elements one by one so that it's clear to AI that I want a certain order and I want uh, not specifically the icon, but I want like the title, the text, and then the whole text field email field, so this, which is why I'm, I'm mentioning text, email, and password, and then forgot, button, and then line, button, and then button. So it's kind of clear that I'm ordering by each of these elements one by one. And then I'm mentioning delay, which is in animation term, it's when there's a slight delay um, that it has to wait before the animation starts. So I'm mentioning 0.1 second increment. So each one subsequently will be added by 0.1. So the second one 0.2, the third one 0.3, etc. And then I'm mentioning the terms, the animation terms such as fade in. So that's a very universal term for animation. Slide down, blur in. So blur is very specific to iOS. Um, it's not very common, I would say, on the web, which is why if you ask this in HTML, it would have trouble. But if you have to ask this in SwiftUI, it's not gonna have trouble because it's very common in iOS to use a blur animation. So we're going to apply this and let's hope that it understands. In my testing, it was able to do exactly uh, what I've shown you and it did it really, really well but we never know, uh, it might not be consistent. And looking at the code, I think we do have blur, so <laughs> this is pretty good. Um, and then what else? Let's see, we have opacity, but it doesn't seem to be animated, we'll see. And uh, we're gonna test this, we're gonna apply it, and then we're gonna see how it goes. Now, as with AI, keep in mind that everyone might have a different result, which is why I'm kind of being careful with this course not to um, not to be too 
uh, off the path, but also not to be too linear because I know there's always a little chance that it's not going to have exactly uh, that path that everyone's going to get the same. So I'm going to apply this and let's see how it goes. This is loading, so you have to pay attention to this because it takes time to load. And uh, also it depends on your computer. So uh, a lot of factors to take into consideration when you're building an app. But you can see it's not doing the, uh, the sequence animation. So I'm guessing it's a little bit down to lock, but at least it does the animation. So I'm not gonna retry it, but it's something to keep in mind and to experiment. And I will be providing the full code so that you can see uh, what's going on. But in general, it does apply the blur animation. And, uh, and yeah, you know, like it was applying to pretty much all of the, the layers. And every time that you want to refresh the animation, you can go to another view and come back or you can just press space and wait a little bit and it's going to regenerate, refresh the view and reapply the animation. Now, the next part, we're going to toggle on the content view. So right now we have the content view and in this content view, the sign up screen is included at the very bottom. So we have the Z stack, we have the background, we have the V stack, which is the, uh, the card for generating. And then we have the sign up view, which is what we created from Figma. And then on that sign up view, we apply the animation. Now, what are we gonna ask Claude to do? Well, Alex, in this case, uh, is to do a toggle. All right, now we have the content view, which is what is the context. And then we're gonna apply the prompt. So add an account button floating at the top right of the screen, so very clear where it's supposed to be. Floating, uh, I, I like to use floating when I, I want something to, to use kind of like a Z stack and or an overlay. So it's a good term for that. It also works for the web. Account button because I want to be specific to the account icon. And it, you know, AI is probably gonna use it as a symbol related to account and then button. Then you know, at the top of the screen, you, you can say card, it's gonna be at the top of the card. And then we want to toggle. So again, I'm using uh, specific terms that AI is really gonna understand. So toggle is typically a function that you're gonna use, uh, referencing the name specifically sign of view. And again, we're using a blur and slide animation. And then usually when you use a slide animation, you wanna mention where it's coming from or what direction, either from or to. And so those are kind of the animation terms. So I'm going to press enter. And again, hope for the best. Uh, we don't know how consistent it's going to be. We know that the email validation prompt was very consistent in my testings, but we don't know about animation. Animation, I think, is one of the new things. And it's still something that AI uh, tend to have trouble with. So I'm going to apply this. So now we have the state, which is very normal. And then we have the blur and uh, it's applying and yes, so it should be good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept this and let's see how that goes. So this is loading again, very important. And yes, very consistent, boom, right? Very, very consistent. So I'm really happy when AI is consistent. That means that you, as someone who's following this course, will be able to get exactly what I have and and voila you know if you are implementing a screen such as uh, a message or a chat or a sign up a account setting screen for example this is a really really good way to do it and as i mentioned before in your figma file you have multiple of these components that you can generate and then now i'm just showing you how to just apply a a ui that's going to an animate in and then out by using a toggle. So as you can imagine, this is very flexible and you can experiment with different kinds of UI. So I hope you enjoyed it and have fun with your experimentations.